I've had two uh, altercations with cars. Cars were at fault in both situations. My first altercation happened at night. My bike has a very strong light on the front. There was a car going somewhere and they came around a sharp corner using up both sides of the lane because they were apparently in quite a rush. So in order to not get hit head on with the car, I had to veer off the road. There's no shoulder on the road. So when I hit the gravel, I fell off my bike and broke my collarbone. I don't even know if they knew that I was there, but the second time I, I think I just, uh, you know, the surgeon says I fell the wrong way and I, ca I can't fall on this collarbone anymore. They just went through a stop sign, you know, and, and, and uh, kind of nicked my back wheel and I went into the ditch. I, I, I didn't see them do it because, um, because I didn't have a stop sign there, so I was just carrying on and they flew right through. I think they knew and they drove away. Uh, on November 22nd in 2006, I was riding home from my work here in Ganges. And unfortunately on that night, it was 545 and it was dark. I was lit up like a Christmas tree. I had multiple lights and reflectors on me. I was very visible. I could see there was car headlights coming at me and there were cars coming from behind. So I moved over to the uh, to the shoulder to the fog line just to let the traffic pass. I did a quick shoulder check and about two feet behind me I saw a headlight. Uh, next thing I knew I was uh, up in the air. Uh, I was pitched fork, uh, pitch forked over a truck. The fog line ended exactly where I was hit. And I actually was a target many times. They thought it was whoever they were, they thought it was fun to come up behind me in a car and beat the horn. And I was totally unaware of that and I would fall off the bike and luckily many times into the ditch, but they never helped me, they just laughed, thought it was funny. I also was involved in a pretty bad accident. I was on my way to work in the morning and I was like a flashlight. It was impossible not to see me. I was going straight and the person that was behind me, she turns right in front of me and it was impossible for me not to hit her. I got tangled with a car but I don't really know for sure what happened because my, uh, my memory cuts out. The people who found me said uh, there was an SUV um, parked uh, or stopped momentarily and then they drove on so it was a it was a hit and run quickly my pelvic ring was, was shattered it was a fractured dislocation of my left si joint and my pubis symphysis bones were were shattered as well my helmet was still broken from the impact on the ground um, but i was very fortunate that i didn't uh, suffer any uh, head trauma the headlight uh, on the F-150 made contact with my left fibula, where, which was fractured. I had a uh, ruptured bladder. I spent uh, over a month in uh, Victoria General before they were able to transfer me to uh, Lady Minto, and I spent another a month there approximately. I would say in the last three years, I'm starting to, uh, to progress more than I ever have. I was using crutches, wheelchairs, canes up until that point. I felt my helmet and he was right there on my head. I broke all kinds of stuff and worst of it all was I broke my pelvis, and that was pretty painful and of course I had big bruises on my forehead because my, my forehead hit somewhat. This is the helmet I wore. It cracked right here but the pelvis was a little rough one to, to get organized and get it back to walking and it took me a while. When I experienced a uh... Uh, a spinal cord injury on and uh, a brain injury incomplete paralysis though uh, plus a assortment of other injuries um, including a collapsed lung and a, a broken jaw I've had a couple of accidents over the years um, it hasn't stopped me from cycling the same way that someone who has an accident in an automobile would stop driving. But if we had bike lanes, uh, I don't think either of these accidents would have happened. I'd still cycle. 
uh, on these roads. It took me some time. To, I ride on a uh, recumbent trike uh, because the injuries are such that it's difficult for me to sit on a, uh, a regular bike seat. Of course, everybody assumed I was not going to go back biking again, but biking was my life. That's how I went to work. The first time biking back to work after this was scary because particularly the spot where I had been injured. But it went away and it went over with and I biked for many, many more years to go. They told me basically that I was uh, never going to walk again. And, uh, but I, I'm walking and I, used my sight to walk uh, and not use my balance because uh, I don't feel much below my my uh, my my side of my injury which is C6 C7 I I can't feel much in my hands more so in my index fingers and thumbs than then, uh, which is, thank God, which, then my little guys. These accidents impact everybody. It's not just the, the victim that gets hurt in these situations. So having more uniformity, having wider uh, shoulders, particularly uh, on the main routes, would, would hopefully reduce the kind of serious accidents uh, that we see on the island to, to cyclists and pedestrians. The time went on, I thought, I've got to do something about this because people are riding without helmets. So I started a program that I called Helmet for Life. Since 2000, Margareta's Helmets for Life program, working with Island Pathways, has fitted bicycle helmets of good quality onto the heads of more than 700 Salt Spring Elementary School children. They pay $10 each with donations to Island Pathways covering the rest of the cost. Through the years, she has held numerous bike rodeos at elementary schools, working with the RCMP to teach safe cycling skills. Island Pathways continues her good work. Oftentimes, uh, cycling on Salt Spring, um, there, are, there is a, a bike lane or, or a wide shoulder, but then there's no nothing that, uh, for instance, the, the shoulder disappears or or the bike lane disappears and and gravel appears <laughs> and uh, and you move out into the street to avoid gravel or lack of trail and that's r really tough um, to to move out and then move back and move out and move back and it's tough on on cars too i know when i frustrate people that they wonder what i'm doing in their way it's a matter of all of us being there together you know so we need a we need a proper bike lane from ferry to ferry in order to show the world how beautiful our island is and how safe it is to to travel by bicycle on Highland Pathways has been working to get a bikeway through Salt Spring Island since 1988. This means widened paved shoulders on the main ferry routes, about 20 kilometers. Safety is the number one concern, especially as cyclists' numbers increase with ever more e-bike riders. The Salish Sea Trail Network cycling routes on southern Vancouver Island draw people to Salt Spring Island, which remains a rough gem in the main ring. Let's bring this section up to acceptable safety standards for local and visiting cyclists so we can get this amazing 260 kilometer loop trail connected and showcased to the world. For more information, check the links below.